and I are back. We're live here on OTR. We're joined now by the current Attorney General, Martha Coakley, who would love to be governor. She And you are in Somerville, right, Martha? Yes, I am. We're at our headquarters here. Very good. good. And, and good morning to you. And just, just so we can balance it out, this is also weather casting audition. What's it doing in Somerville? Uh, it is kind of snowing, sleeting. Uh, at tail end of the nor'easter, I hope. There you go. They're both qualified to do weather forecasts for us. I think maybe, with the, well, yeah. it, hopefully you won't have to take that up as a profession. <laughs> Before we even talk about politics, Martha, um, let's talk a little bit about the man whose spirit sort of hovers over all of us, or I should say most over most of Massachusetts right now, Tom Menino. What's your best memory of him? What did he do that will be very hard to be duplicated by anybody? Well, it, it was the way he approached his job, focusing on people first and making sure that every corner of every neighborhood was taken care of because it was so important to his constituents. But I do remember, particularly when we were working on turning houses around, getting abandoned property back, and he was focused on, yeah, this is great to have a house back on the tax rolls, but what he really cared about was this was going to be a home for some family uh, as we came out of this recession, making sure that his city and the people in his city were going to be able to partake in that and have homes. And he was very focused on people who are homeless. Um, it, it really was a tribute to see him today uh, lying in Faneuil Hall with his family and so many people coming to pay respects. It's where he did so many important things. You know, when he announced he was going to run, not run again. Mm -hmm. uh, when he announced, uh, you know, that he was, uh, when he was getting sworn in. And so uh, it really was moving to see everybody with Angela and Tom Jr. and uh, uh, his daughter Susan and, and uh, siblings there today. A lot of support for the family today. Martha, at the debate the other night, there, there was a back and forth between you and Charlie Baker about fees and taxes. And you say that you hope you don't have to raise taxes. And then you later said that it was a joke when you said you wouldn't raise fees. Tell voters now exactly what your promises are regarding taxes and fees so, if you were elected. So I've said, like Charlie Baker, I hope and believe that income taxes will go down to 5%. Um, our economy is on the rise. And so that should be triggered to make that income tax go down. I hope not to raise fees either, and the only reason we had that exchange is because a week before that, I had sat across from him where he's, when he was asked that question, and he said, well, it depends on the fees. And we also know, you know, Mitt Romney, a Republican governor, came and said, no new taxes, but yet he raised significantly, significantly the fees in Massachusetts. So I think it's important for each of us to be held to what we say and what we're going to invest in, what we want to do here in Massachusetts. You heard Baker uh, just a few minutes ago on this broadcast when he talked about sort of his emotional breakdown during our debate when he talked about a new Bedford fisherman. Do you think this issue is key for voters when they go to the polls on Tuesday? Why and why not? Well, well, look, Janet, I think it raises some questions that are still unanswered, by the way. The New Bedford Standard Times and The Globe and others have said, you know, who is this fisherman? And as he and his campaign have walked it back saying, well, maybe it wasn't New Bedford or maybe it wasn't a football scholarship. I think the other question for me is this. It was clearly an emotional moment. You were there. I was there. He was moved by this. And I guess my question would be, if it was so important and it had such an impact on him, then what has he been able to do for fishermen? Look, I've got on my website uh, an interview with a fisherman from Gloucester named Joe Orlando. I talked to fishermen for the last several years. That has moved me to stand up to the federal government and to take action. And I do think voters are entitled to see whose side are we on, who are we going to fight for. Not only what moves us, not what conversations we have, but what does it cause us to do? He, he used the term desperate act just a few minutes ago, Martha, in, in, in reference to you or, or the Democrats using that as ammunition. It, it, do you care to respond to that, him using the term well, desperate I act? Uh, what I know is that we are focused on obviously getting our message out, importantly getting our vote out, and I'm really confident with our ground game. We've been planning on this since last September. But keep in mind, you know, Charlie Baker is the one who told this story. Charlie Baker is the one who's not answering the questions about it. And so uh, we're pursuing our very positive message for voters. We're going to win on Tuesday because of that positive message. The questions are for Charlie Baker, it seems to me, around so you're saying, that in other particular words, it, piece of the debate. So you're saying, in other words, it is a key issue that voters should consider as they go in to make a decision if they're undecided? Well, I think as voters look at what they will see as to who's on their side, what drives people to action, who are they going to work for? My record's pretty clear, standing up for homeowners, keeping 30,000 people in their homes, challenging the Defense of Marriage Act. When I hear a story that affects me emotionally, I try and take action on I, it. I, I asked Charlie this question. I'd like to ask you the same question. It's about jobs. You, you, you and Charlie both agree that creating jobs is a key mission if, if whoever's elected. So give us a rough estimate of how many jobs you think you can create in your first year in office. 
Ah, well, look, this is a big difference between uh, my Republican opponent and me also. I have said, and I think as we see our economy turn around and we see our economy moving at twice the rate of many states, I think our focus also has to be, besides cutting red tape and rolling out the red carpet to businesses, which I will do, that's where jobs are created. What we really need to do is provide the other half of that equation, is provide the workforce and the investment in our kids, in computer science, in early education, so our people here in Massachusetts are ready for those jobs. That's how we not only get jobs to start up, but to stay here and to keep those jobs here. He doesn't address that issue. Um, this afternoon, former Inspector General Greg Sullivan is holding a press conference to question your version of events regarding the investigation of former House Speaker Sal DeMacy more than six years ago. He's alleging you tried to sidestep this politically sensitive issue. Do you think this matters to voters? Why or why not? Well, I, I'm happy to, to let voters know what the facts are. Uh, we did have a whistleblower come to our office. Uh, he did raise some issues around procurement fraud. We thought that was an issue for the inspector general. But in the meantime, we did open a criminal investigation around Cognos. We did cooperate with the federal government around Sal DeMacy and Dick McDonough. And we also held Dick Vitale accountable for that. I think the results are pretty clear here, Janet. I'll stand on my reputation of over 70 cases of public corruption that we brought as I'm attorney general against people in my own party. I think the results are clear. All right, Martha, because we're at, the, we're at the end of our time, I want to give you a chance for redemption. What's the state's gas tax? 24 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I want to also extend the same invitation to you. If you are elected, we'd love to have you on OTR next Sunday. And I might ask you what the state's gas tax is again next Sunday. I'm not sure. But no, we'll... you won't. <laughs> okay, no, I won't, she says. I won't do that. Fair enough, but I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> Martha Coakley, thank you for joining us.